It is my pleasure now to ask uh, Cesare PZ yep. on problems. Thank you. Hello to everyone. Thank you. Can you hear me? Everyone can you hear me? Okay, great. Okay, let's uh, start immediately. I have to fly a bit uh, on the presentation because it's a bit, l maybe a bit long, but uh, okay, let's uh, I do my best to do everything. Okay, mm, that's about me, but uh, let's skip it. So just uh, a few information about me. Uh, I'm a security researcher. I work on a lot of open source projects. Uh, I developed uh, in the past a uh, proof of concept for an Arduino you know, code injections, but that's uh, not important. You can have a look to these things in my GitHub. If, uh, I will leave you the reference at the end of the presentation. But let's start with uh, the presentation of this little research. So what I start to think was uh, uh, something about uh, uh, the invisible cloud, as I, to as I called him, it, um, of the sandboxes. We have a lot of tools uh, out there which popped out in the last, uh, I don't know, five years. Uh, sandboxes. Uh, available for more or less everyone from our side. From other side, a lot of vendors that are trying to sell this kind of software in to be uh, installed in our environment. Or maybe another option is to install our own uh, sandbox by using, for example, well-known uh, tool like uh, Cuckoo, for example, which is a great tool. And so we have a lot of these systems around. Uh, and what I thought is, OK, can we try to use them uh, outside of what is uh, their maybe intended be, uh, intended usage, uh, and so I started to mm, try to do to make uh, uh, some thoughts about this. And so, okay, first of all, the sandboxes are usually isolated, so uh, our environments that are not uh, able to go anywhere. But uh, maybe we can try to do something about this. And so, what if we can get access to these systems? For example, we can try to get some internal information that uh, are maybe are not uh, uh, mean to be disclosure. For example, serial numbers. For example, the first thing I thought was the serial number of the office installation, for example. Or maybe we can try to fingerprint the system to uh, understand if you are in a sandbox. This we can see, we will see later that it's maybe done for some nefarious reasons. Or maybe use them uh, as a bridge to go somewhere else, for example and maybe other things as well. And so first thing, I try to do a quick list of sandboxes out there. This is, a, a, I, I know, this is not a complete list. We have tons of them. I just got this because they are more or less the most uh, famous or in any case used, for example, for sure, Virus Total, everyone knows what is it, uh, and uh, also the others, probably. But uh, and there are quite a lot. So I decided not to do this test manually, but to write uh, a script. Uh, to automate the actions. And so um, I would like to have, OK, I'd like to build something that allowed me to conduct this research. And uh, that was done not reinventing <coughs> anything, actually, sorry, but uh, leveraging uh, well-known tools like, for example, MS Venom from the Metasploit to create the payloads, or maybe the 7-zip self-extractor to create. What I would like to do is to create a kind of uh, self-extracting uh, executable that will have a callback function, uh, a way to drop files, because I would like to bring with me some utilities on the sandbox itself, and maybe a kind of randomization, let's say a simple one, because we, all we know that we all know that the sandboxes are usually doing a basic check about the hashes. Uh, I would like to avoid this to trigger, in any case, every time I upload a sample, a new analysis. So I in created something to address this issue. And so that's not rocket science. Uh, just uh, it's a quick and dirt uh, Python script, uh, nothing uh, really special, but uh, I will release it on GitHub, on my GitHub at the end of uh, the DEF CON. So, uh, you can try to use it, OK? You can write your own. Uh, it's the same. Probably it's not so difficult to do it. But it allowed me to automate this research. So how it works? It's, uh, it's in some way, the script itself, it's uh, able to leverage the MS Venom capabilities to create uh, a specific payload with uh, a specific callback IPM port. Uh, it has the possibility to specify a folder where I can put my utilities and uh, uh, also way to script my actions when I try to upload this on the sandbox. 
Okay, for example, here we can see uh, an example of the drop folder. The drop folder is just a folder where I'll put all my utilities. For example, here you can see that I would like to upload on the sandbox the QRL.exe and the product key.exe. Product key.exe is uh, an utility for Nearsoft, which is uh, extracting the Microsoft Office uh, product key, for example, from uh, the system. And I would like to bring this on the, system, on the sandbox itself. So at the end, when uh, we run the script, uh, I, will, I, I will have something like that. So uh, a kind of uh, self-extracting executable with some scrambled name. As you can see here, you see some .txt, .txt files, which are the cool .txt we saw before. Uh, scrambled names with uh, scrambled content as well, because I would like, as I said, to avoid the hash detections. And so uh, that uh, is what uh, it will be created. Uh, Together with this, we will see also a setup button or setup.sh, which has an underscore uh, at the beginning with uh, the actions I would like to automate. Okay, the underscore means, uh, okay, don't touch the file, uh, uh, tell to my script to not touch the file, but just uh, uh, put it into the package without scrambling it because uh, uh, in some case, I don't want to rename it. And so let's start with the case one. So uh, I would like to try to get a reverse shell out from the sandboxes. So I run the script with this syntax here, we're very simple. And uh, I uploaded it on all these sandboxes uh, mentioned at the beginning. And this is the result. As you can see here, uh, a lot of them gave me uh, actually a shell. For some of them, it's not actually a surprise. Any run, for example, allow you interactive access. So, okay, it's not a big issue. Uh, but for some other, uh, maybe it's uh, more surprising. And what I would like to stress is here the behavior of Palo Alto and Virus, Virus Total. Uh, both of them gave me a TCP callback, but then the uh, connection uh, went down. Like uh, if there is a kind of IPS or something monitoring the outgoing connection of this system, probably they have something which is, was recognizing that uh, I tried to open a reverse shell and they mm, cut off the uh, connection. But Let's keep uh, in mind this because uh, we'll come back on, on this later on and we'll see something uh, funny. Okay, now I have a reverse shell on the system, but uh, why this is relevant? Why I should be worried about? Because uh, I can actually extract information from them. Uh, here you can see I run the uh, product key.exe and I got the, uh, inst the office installation product keys. I removed them from uh, privacy here, obviously, but they were there. And so why this is important? Uh, that's really important in my, from my point of view, from a point of view of a malware researcher, for example. Uh, first of all, consider that uh, uh, this is uh, a private information that pay probably someone don't want to disclose. Especially if you are running your own sandbox, this is something that you have to consider because, okay, if you are relying on something that is provided by a, an IT vendor, we uh, don't care. We just use uh, what the, our, fi our firewall vendor is uh, providing us as a, um, as a sandbox, but okay, it's their business if they are losing the, the, the office keys. Uh, if you are running our own, that's, more, that's are, are, yeah, very important. But what is, in my opinion, uh, the most important thing here is that uh, this allows to leak information from this. And this allows the uh, fingerprinting of the system. It, this is already happening. Uh, a lot of malware is doing this. Uh, I came across a um, sample uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, of the Okai uh, keylogger, which was, uh, which the, the installer was checking for the username of the system. Username that we get from probably virus total or uh, a sandbox like that one. And so that's really important because that means that if uh, the um, sample is able to identify it, uh, uh, it can also evade the, um, the analysis. So it can, uh, make the most uh, undetectable sandboxes uh, useless, let's say. Okay, this is a quick demo of what, uh, what I did. So here I um, tried to upload a sample on uh, uh, the SND box. Uh, as you can see on the, uh, your left side, yes, there was a um, Metasploit running. As I can see, I got the, um, the reverse shell here and then uh, I was able to extract the product key, for example, here, obviously, are removed. So let's go to the case two. So uh, I named it uh, cross-sandbox spawning. Uh, what it means? 
we saw that we have external access from the systems. So that means that also we can try to maybe try to run an attack against someone else. Uh, if I upload something that is doing, uh, um, let's say, a SQL injection or something like that uh, to a third-party site, uh, I can do it. Again, this may be not very interesting for us if uh, uh, if we are using uh, third-party sandboxes, but if we are running our own, it's really important because uh, someone could knock on our door and asking us why you did something wrong on that site. So. We, this is something we need to keep in mind. Here, this is a simple setup I did uh, on my on my script. So I just created this uh, this script here. Where, as you can see, there is a QRL.txt running. Uh, in this case, not a real attack. It's just an upload of a file. Uh, but it would be interesting for the third case. So uh, let's keep this in mind. So as you can see, the QR.txt here is uh, angle bracketed because it will be replaced automatically by the script with the scrambled name uh, uh, of, of uh, the file when uh, the, the, the file is renamed. So it will be done automatically by the script. And so this is the result of the test. Uh, as you can see, and I would like to stress, the Palo Alto and Virus Total sandboxes are allowing me to do this. Uh, and that will bring us to the third case. Okay, uh, why this is relevant? Because we have to consider a couple of things. One is that, uh, okay, we can, we can use something to uh, proxy attacks to someone else. This is something that we can take in consideration. Second point, this, uh, sometimes these sandboxes are really uh, in our um, infrastructure because and sometimes we don't even have a real uh, perception of that because uh, for example, our anti-spam vendor may have these his uh, sandboxes, uh, and maybe someone can just run an attack against someone else by sending an email to us, for example, because uh, it just execute the uh, the payload and and so on. Other thing that's interesting is this is uh, an example of uh, zero effort exploit, as uh, uh, described in the science of the wire on the wire book, which is a great book if you if you work in security field. So have a have a read of it. Uh, so let's have a look uh, to uh, the demo as well. So here I'm uh, uploading the demo on uh, the um, site, and then I'm looking for my on the hybrid analysis, which is a well-known sandboxes sandbox. Uh, then I created a fake site, uh, just uh, waiting for uh, an info.php file to be uploaded. And uh, we can see here that, uh, okay, I got this file uploaded on the sandbox itself. So, and this is work, this worked for all the sandboxes we saw before. And that is bringing us to uh, the third case. So let's try to do something creative to combine the two things we did before. So, okay, uh, we saw that some of the sandboxes looks like uh, preventing us to get access and to leak information. But if we combine the second, uh, the second case, maybe we can do something. So I created another little script which uh, has been uh, processed by my Python script, which is just combining the QRL.txt, QRL so the upload of the file, with the product key.txt. So I just, as you can see here, redirected the output of the, keys, uh, of the, of the product key.txt uh, in a file and then try to upload it on uh, uh, on my um, on my site, and actually, I was able in this way to extract information from both Palo Alto and Virus Total. So that means that also in this case, uh, I was uh, able to get this, uh, let's say, something that is not uh, supposed to be disclosed. And so let's have a look here of uh, the uh, oh, again a quick demo. In this case, on the Palo Alto wildfire sandbox. So I uploaded the payload. And then in a while I will see that I will have the, the file uploaded uh, on, uh, on my site with all the leaked information uh, I would like to, to get. So here it is. And so we can get the information out. OK. Uh, Maybe we can also use this system to do some other things because it's just our three cases, very quick. Uh, but maybe we can try to do other things like, uh, for example, 
test your own sandbox. If you are running your own sandbox in your environment, that's something I encourage you to do for sure, because uh, maybe someone is not realizing that uh, some kind of information are maybe sent out without uh, uh, big effort. So it's something that uh, you need to check. Maybe try to different fingerprinting techniques because there, there's uh, really a, a, a wall here. You can get every kind of information out of the sandbox, beginning from the shell bags, the shim cache content, and so on. All this information allows someone to do a very, very precise fingerprinting of the system, maybe understanding also which is the, the specific sandbox he is running on. So that's something that uh, you have to take into consideration. Also, I added this build, build a database with the result and fingerprinting on server sandbox. But maybe this is not a good idea. I don't know if maybe it can be used by uh, for nefarious way uh, uh, in nefarious way. So, and then okay, you can try some other things like I don't know. I, I thought mining maybe no maybe not because uh, uh, I think the, the the running time is limited to 15 minutes usually or something like that. So mining is probably not probably a uh, are, are real, um, are real things to do, but okay, it's something you can you can try. So this is the summary of what uh, I did. So the uh, results on the several sandboxes uh, with uh, the specific uh, uh, test I run, and uh, uh, sample of collected data. Here I'm focused mainly on the uh, Office product key, which were obviously redacted here for privacy, but uh, you can get everything out from the systems. It's just a matter of uh, uh, thinking uh, what you want to, to get. Are offline sandbox safer? Uh, you know, there are, and we saw that there are some vendors not allowing uh, us any kind of external access. So are they safer? Maybe yes, uh, a, a little bit. Um, because uh, in case of an APT, for example, let's uh, think about a determined attacker. Um, uh, in this case, uh, maybe it can just get access to your technology. So if I have FireEye, which is not allowing maybe um, um, external access, but I can get the appliance, uh, I can try to run the fingerprinting, uh, fingerprinting on that specific sandbox and so extract this information anyway, because what these sandboxes are doing are um, creating very detailed report on what uh, uh, the sample is doing. So maybe just writing a, a registry key with the content I would like to extract, for example, the uh, product key of office or every, uh, any other information, I can just get uh, the information out. So they are safer probably, but not completely uh, safe in this point. Remediations, okay, which are the remediations? It's not easy because I understand that this is uh, part of the uh, sandbox functionality. So not easy to block this kind of behaviors. Uh, but uh, it's something we have to consider and the vendors have to consider because uh, it's really maybe dangerous in some, in some cases. Um, for example, an IPS on the outside connection is a solution that probably is already in place for some of the vendors, uh, as we saw at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, also, a web application firewall maybe masking uh, information uh, going out. It's another solution that could be uh, considered. And uh, for, let's say, for internal information, probably the best solution is randomize as much as possible. Uh, but it's not the easy one. Uh, randomization, for sure, is the one that uh, uh, could allow to avoid these kind of issues. But uh, it's for sure not the easy solution, so it's not a quick one. Probably the, be, the, the quick and dirty solution is running a kind of IPS or something in uh, outgoing connections. Disclosure, I did it, yes, obviously. So uh, the only reply I got was from the guys at the Virus Total. Uh, they were very interested in the thing, so they worked, and so thumbs up for them because they took it uh, seriously and they are they started to think something about uh, about this, so very good. All the others more or less didn't didn't give me a, a reply about the, about the disclosure. Okay, these are the references of the uh, of all the tool I used in the, in the in the creation of this research. So Metasploit for sure, seven seven zip the DWA site for the creation of the 
of the site uh, and uh, uh, some utilities. And so let's wrap up. Okay, uh, at the end, the sandboxes are useless. No, I don't think so. Uh, I think that uh, we can yeah, just to understand how they work and uh, how, uh, how much trust we can put in them. Because uh, as you can see, it may be easier than what we expect to evade the analysis. So uh, thinking that we are safe because we have a, a sandbox in our environment, uh, checking every file downloaded on a firewall or checking uh, every mail coming in, uh, it's okay, but uh, you have to understand uh, how these things are working and maybe you can also try to run your own test on that because sometimes vendors are just selling these things to us saying, okay, with this you are 100% safe, uh, the sandbox itself is undetectable. Okay, I trust you, but let try to run a couple of tests on them and maybe then ask for a discount for, for it. Uh, okay, uh, this is the, my GitHub. Uh, so if you want to have a look to the presentation to the script, I will publish everything there. And uh, that's all. So thank you for me. I don't know if you have any question. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for being here. And uh, thanks a lot. Enjoy your DEF CON. <laughs>